Need some fast, cheap, reliable muck coins? Go to MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniffing out the Madden cheese as always. Got another Madden 21 ratings video for you. Today, uh, they've dropped the top 10 tight ends and the top 10 receivers. I'm going to go over both of them. Uh, I'm going to start off with receivers because this was kind of an interesting development. I almost feel like EA uh, might have corrected a mistake of sorts because when the 99 overall club's uh, players was released. Um, it only had four players on. I made a video about it, uh, and the one player that I said that probably should have been a 99 that wasn't on there uh, was Michael Thomas. Now, in this particular instance, it almost seems as if EA might have did a 180 on this because now all of a sudden Michael Thomas is a 99 overall player. So either the initial uh, leak wasn't accurate, wasn't fully accurate, wasn't you know all the players weren't on it, or EA actually heard some backlash and added uh, Michael Thomas to the 99 overall club, which I think is actually what happened when, when I'm going to tell you why. Uh, because essentially, whenever the ratings are released, it's typically done in order. Quarterbacks, running backs, receivers, tight ends, and so on. Offensive line, uh, defensive line. They kind of just like work their way through it typically on a typical year. This year, for some reason, they went from quarterbacks to running backs. Then they skipped over uh, receivers and tight ends entirely. And then they went straight to uh, defensive linemen, pass rushers. Uh, they skipped over linebackers, too, which I still don't understand. Then they went to cornerbacks. Now they're coming back around to receivers. So it's possible that uh, they were just doing it a different type of way this year. I personally feel like uh, they heard some backlash, and and it was probably an obvious omission. I mean, Michael Thomas last year, I think he broke the receive the receptions record, had a monster season. Uh, he really was the he really was the uh, he kind of took over for Drew Brees as the most important player on the Saints offense, which is not an easy thing to do. Uh, so to me, like I said, I made a video. I've put a link in the description for the videos I've previously made about this topic, uh, where I essentially said that the only 99 overall that I could think of that was missing was Michael Thomas, and I'm. I'm not saying I'm not trying to take credit for it, but I'm guessing a lot of people probably said something to that effect, and they uh, might have corrected their mistake. Whether that's true or not, it's really not that important. But we're going to go. We're going to move on the list. Uh, another guy. I'm pretty sure DeAndre Hopkins was a 99 overall last year. Uh, I, I think he was a part of the 99 club. I'm not 100 sure about that. But he's coming in at number two with a 98 rating. There's no real reason that he would drop off, other than something I've also discussed amongst these videos and the string of these videos is that for some reason cardinals players are for they're just underrated like i i said that about chandler uh chandler uh Chandler Jones. I said that about uh, Patrick Peterson in the in the DBs video, and I'm now I'm now seeing that with DeAndre Hopkins, who got traded to the Cardinals, and for some reason went down a point, even after having a monster year and, and possibly being the best receiver in the league. That's the thing about being a receiver in Madden. There's there's really three or four guys that you could argue are the best receiver in the league. It's a great era for receivers right now. Uh, I would say Thomas, DeAndre Hopkins, and Julio Jones. Julio Jones, to me, I still think he's the best receiver in the game. Um, he was second in the league in yards last year, if that means anything. Uh, he missed the game, and he was still second in the league in, yard, er, in yards, and he was only one catch away from 100 catches. But, I mean, he does it all. He's a guy, unlike these other receivers, who really just catch in volume. Uh, Julio Jones is a guy that can stretch the field as good as any receiver in the league, and he's also, I mean, he's got a complete game. So, to me, if I'm picking one receiver in the NFL, it's Julio Jones. Now, there's a fourth guy who's not even on this list. It's the guy who's currently not on an NFL roster, and Antonio Brown. I don't know. You know, he'll probably be a free agent. I don't know if they removed him from the game entirely, uh, but he should still be on this list. He should still be in the top 10, whether he's on a team or not. Now, moving on to number four. Number four is probably the most dangerous receiver on this list, Tyree Kill. He's probably going to have a 99 speed. He's all of a sudden a 96 overall receiver, so he's got the skills to match. Uh, but there's a couple of guys that are definitely missing. If I had to say one guy that I could drop off this list entirely, I'd probably say Odell Beckham Jr. because he he's an amazing talent, but obviously he didn't bring it last year. I mean, he, he didn't have one. He might have had one game where it was like, that's Odell Beckham. You know what I mean? Like that was, and I think that was the Monday night or the Sunday night game on prime time. But he's a guy I would definitely drop off. And there's a lot of guys you could replace him with. Cooper Cup earlier in the year was having a monstrous season. It was to the point where you were asking, is he one of the best receivers in the league? And I think that you could have put him on here without a problem. He had 10 touchdowns, was good enough for second in the league. Um, there's a couple of guys. DJ Moore never really gets talked about. He had a great year last year. I'm not saying any of these guys necessarily belong at this point, but I'm just going to list off a bunch of names. Chris Godwin, 
if I had to make a case for somebody, Chris Godwin was third in the league in yards. I'd probably make a case for him. He had nine touchdowns. He had a monster year. Devontae Parker really turned it on. Kenny Galladay, seventh in the league in yards, 11 touchdowns, led the league in touchdowns. And he's also a lot like Julio Jones. He's a guy that can stretch the field and make monstrous plays down the field. He averaged 18 yards a catch. Now, moving on to the tight ends, this is the one I probably have the most issue with. And I'm going to start off at the top. George Kittle, to me, he could be a 99 and nobody would complain. I mean, he's probably the most one of the most explosive receiving tight ends in the game he plays he plays actually in line hand in the dirt unlike travis kelsey who probably has better stats uh but ultimately travis kelsey plays more like a receiver he's all over the offense and i mean kittle is too but to me i think of kittle more as a traditional tight end he's one of the best blocking tight ends in the league and that's part of the reason that san francisco's offense is so dominant in the run game is they have the best blocking fullback and they have the best blocking tight end uh but like i said not a huge issue there but number three drives me absolutely insane how does rob gronkowski who comes off of retirement and i know that the last season he played he was a he was a super bowl champion but rob gronkowski if you actually watched him play his last season especially down the down the stretch going into the super bowl um he was washed physically absolutely washed but what year is this game coming out? Is this coming out? Is this Madden 21 or are we talking about Madden 16? Because there's no way that Rob Gronkowski is a 95. But if you think that he's going to, to have a 95 overall type season in, in real life this year, you've got to be you're on something. And then the fact that he's five points ahead of Zach Ertz, who just two years ago broke the, broke the receptions record for tight ends. You're telling me he's that much better than than uh than zach ertz who to me zach ertz is one of the he's in the running for best tight end in the league i, I would put him behind kelsey and kittle but he's not that far behind and he's definitely not behind rob Murkowski, who just comes out of retirement and just gets like an honorary 95 for whatever reason i don't know and then after that it gets really stupid uh, starting off with evan ingram at number six now, if you're just going off of physical talents, which once again, based off of Rob Gronkowski's 95 overall, that can't be the, the, what it's about. Evan Ingram probably deserves that in a, in a talent standpoint. But if you go off of production, which is typically what this is, you got a guy who last year, despite all his physical gifts, his speed, his athleticism, he's basically like a, a slot receiver playing tight end. He somehow only had 44 catches for 467 yards with an average of 10 yards a catch. And I know he hasn't, he's had some injuries as well, uh, which is a big part of it. But I just don't see how you can give a guy based off of that uh, to, 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 to be a, the, the sixth highest rated tight end. Like I said, I would love that because he's my probably my favorite tight end other than Darren Waller in the game. But when you have Darren Waller at 10th coming off of a much better season, a monstrous season where he's 15th in the league in, rece in receiving yards, he had 90 catches, uh, how, does he, how is Darren Waller not ahead of Evan Ingram? You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't understand that at all. Evan Ingram, to me, is still at the point where he's, he's like a talented player. You know what I mean? He's, hasn't, he hasn't arrived at all. Now, a guy who's constantly hurt, that probably should have made this list in the same vein as an Evan Ingram. I would say, I mean, if I if I cut one guy out of here, I'd definitely cut Greg Olson because, like I said, he's, he's definitely getting up in age. Still a decent player, but he really can't do a ton. I would say Hunter Henry probably deserves that spot a little bit more. Uh, maybe even Dallas Goddard, who's a, a rising player uh, in Philadelphia, who definitely gets overshadowed because he's playing behind Zach Gertz. Mike Gusecki is another guy who really came on strong last year. I mean, if you're going off of just potential, there's a lot of guys that I would have ahead of Greg Olson. If that's, if that's the criteria, you got Evan Ingram in there because it's what it kind of sounds like. I mean, I feel like there's a couple of guys that could be ahead of that. So I'm going to end the video. If you guys want to see more videos like this, let me know in the comment section or hit the like button and I'll do more of them. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out.